Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Disruptor! Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Necrophos.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Reserve time. Meek's assassin. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Thanks, Yuri. All right, Blitz. I don't have time to really mock you for making fun of my safe lane, Lesh. We actually have so much to talk about here. OD and Meepo as last picks. Let's start with the OD, Blitz. 
Where did that come from? I mean, OD's always been kind of one of those like Southeast Asia in Star Wars. Like, if you remember in Dota 1, there was a guy named Silvercross, I think it was his name, that used to play it uh, pretty phenomenally just to give some history. And it is kind of a Mushi hero. Like, it's the hero that lane dominates and can scale to the late game pretty decently. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of agree with them in that I think the Nyx, if Misery plays this right, and no doubt after that last game, I think he's going to kind of be refreshed and he's going to say to himself, okay, you know, I've got to pick things back up. And that mana burn, I'm just looking at Fnatic's lineup from top to bottom, with the exception of maybe the Beer Breaker and even the Spirit Breaker has such a small mana pool. Yeah. I think that Nyx is going to do work. Damage wise, Spirit Breaker won't be hurt that much, but for sure he's got such a limited mana pool that one mana burn could actually kill his combination. Yeah, it destroys, I mean, it destroys the Lushrak, it really hurts. Uh, the Darks here too, who uh, cut through mana so quickly, and yep. especially in the late game, that Obsidian Destroyer is going to have some troubles. Uh, but I really like Secrets lineup. They went back to heroes that they're used to playing. For example, we've got Eternal Envy on Necro. I, I think he was the first person I saw go for that like double Ring of Protection build, you know, in the safe lane. And uh, Weha, obviously, everybody knows him for the Meepo. I think I'm like 0-3 against this guy in solo queue when he picks it. Yeah, definitely a big comfort hero for him. Um... Can you talk about why the Meepo would be a very strong last pick against Fnatic's, like, such heavy intel lineup? I mean, it's a good split pusher, and when it comes to team fights, they needed something to be able to burst. But at the same time, it is really fragile, and this is kind of just two lineups that really rely on snowballing. Yeah. Like, it's very rare that you see this where one team is... Uh, usually going for one strat, the other is like trying to hit a mid-game timing, but mm -hmm. both teams kind of really heavily rely on being able to win the laning phase and go out of that. Just because it was like Necro and Meepo are pretty greedy, and at the same time Fnatic has a really greedy draft with... Uh, picked like four ints into, yeah. <laughs> into a Nyx Assassin. I don't think that has to be explained too much. Weha, okay, so he's going to be playing the mid Meepo. Hold up here. Uh, Ohio's going to be caught here, it looks like. The Kinetic Fields is going to be able to block out Puppy and Pie Lightite's pursuit, and he'll live with just 40 HP. Puppy and Pie, are they still going to try and chase him down? Ohio's going to go for the deny on the neutral creeps, and he will be successful. So, at least they force a suicide out of Disruptor at the very least. Uh, but going back to it, Weha, as, I mean, they needed a good mid laner up against the, uh, the Mushi OD. This seems like Bo is going to do all right, comparatively. I mean, OD just always crushes his lane, it seems like. I mean, you've got two of yourself, so what, is, what does the OD do? Yeah. I guess you can't use one Meepo very effectively, but you've got the other one. I don't actually know how this matchup goes, because uh, OD hasn't really been a relevant hero. Run down in the top lane, miss stun, Black, he's gonna miss out here as that only Necro Ohio sends able to pick up the early kill, and Ohio sends back Eternal Envy, but that's not stop those two supports from running down Ohio. All they need is vision right now, Ohio, playing around the trees, what a Duke, is he actually gonna be able to get away from this one? The brain said no, it does go down, he buys a lot of time. Black, can he actually be able to get any sort of kills? They're just gonna keep running him down, the combination of Necro Pulse plus the Wiz, he's making them just too damn powerful. Black runs back into the tier 1 tower, he's fighting out the charge right now, Eternal Levy, he's being oh, charged he's up, so he's dead. taking so many tower shots, I lie, die, uh, I think they're just stuck here, it's gonna be a two-man death, as eventually the Spirit Girl is gonna make his way in, they gotta get out of here eventually, but they only have they one know. Tango to work with, they're gonna try and go for the tree block, they actually get it, they kill the tree, the Necropulse goes out, Net finally makes his way in, goes straight for Pylai Die. Pylai Die is actually living though, and Net's gonna be forced back, unbelievable, Secret actually get away, what an innovative use of the tether to be able to break that one last tree that was blocking them from being able to escape from the side, and do escape as a trio, what a dive from Secret. That was, I, you really have to appreciate that more, because that was so surreal. It was like watching three Bambos play at once. <laughs> they just like all committed for a dive. They knew yeah. the Spirit Breaker was coming. They're like, all right, we've got one Tango. We've got four trees. How do we make this work? Yep. They're just like, okay, you fall really far back. The Spirit Breaker's coming. Like, they saw him coming, too. Yeah, so yeah. they knew they were on a clock, and they had to, like, really quickly think of a scenario. Yeah, the pressure was there. That easily could have been a double kill for Fnatic, but... The fact that they were able to come up with that plan to throw out the tether, to kill the trees, to get out in time, I mean, that was just beautiful and fanatic. I mean, they're going to be feeling so much frustration now after that play. Just forced the Spirit Breaker up, lost two heroes in the process, and uh, now Nyx Assassin. I mean, we talked about how Misery is going to be a pretty key hero here. At the bottom lane, he was just... Uh, able to now free farm against a Darkseer, but we see a replay here. You could see the the, the change up though, the 6.85 Necropulse being upped that damage at level 1 early on in those fights was so
powerful, but look at that. Splitting themselves as much as possible, the tether comes in, breaks the trees, and then just the power of three range heroes against Net was enough to force him back, as tanky as he is. So. Yeah, and uh, the, another change was that suicides no longer count in the kill score, so it is 2-0. Mm-hmm. And we lost both Ohio and Leshrac, and so that top lane has already gone really well for Secret so far, and they needed it to, because if you run this aggressive tri-lane, uh, they don't really have any disables, but they're still making it work, just through the pure power of their dive so far. Yeah. And we're seeing even in this mid lane, things are going okay, because uh, Weeha will always have one of the Meepos available to work with. Yeah, so he should be able to get most of the CS. You can see him throwing down some boost. Top lane, nice double stun, eternal envy though. Man. The early power of that uh, combination of Necrophos and Wiss, they have just so much sustain. Looks like they're actually going to try and run down Ohio here. Eternal Envy gets another get right click, and yeah, Ohio will be taken out. It's the last one coming out from Eternal Envy. And remember, he does have the early level of Sadis. He picked that up at level 2, so every single one of these kills, Eternal Envy is getting a huge a buff in regen. The thing is, is that Fnatic is in a really awkward spot because they can't really get a kill here. Uh, because there's so much sustain up here. You've got a Bane who's got the Brain Sap, he's got the Nightmare available, and he's got a stick. Uh, I think the other two heroes have sticks as well. And Necro is a hero that is deceptive, because you think, okay, he's got 606 HP, not a whole lot of armor, but then he uses one heal. The Wisp comes in with the Tether, and then all of a sudden everything turns around. And so it's not even like Fnatic can really go for these kills, because the turnaround potential is a little bit too high, and that's mm -hmm. what's happening so far. Yeah, I mean, a 250 HP heal on the Necrophos when he's tethered up to the Wisp, and then the Wisp is missing HP as well. It's um, a pretty absurd amount of sustain coming out. Uh, Fnatic right now, a little interesting, Fnatic are still keeping Net in the bottom lane. Is it really necessary for them to keep that much pressure on Misery, or is it more the fact that they feel like they can't even bring the Spirit Breaker up to this top lane to win it? I mean, what would the Spirit Breaker contribute to this top lane? Like, he goes up there, charges one, he doesn't really have burst damage or anything like that. The Disruptor doesn't add anything to this lane, really. Uh, so you've kind of got two heroes that just kind of meander around. It's better to try to put pressure on the map, uh, let that Spirit Breaker rotate between mid and bottom, and hope that your other two lanes win. Because that's what you're kind of banking on right now, is that uh, your Darkseer does well against the Nyx, which he is, and hopefully your OD does well enough against the Meepo that you're offsetting that top lane advantage, but Secret have done such a good job, they even pull the creep wave themselves to make sure that they can go for the double creep wave kill, uh, go for this tower, and that's a 4 minute 52 second tower, and this is going to open up a lot of possibilities now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here's another thing we were talking about. We saw Necrophos not too long ago, you and I, and I asked you about the potential of the Necrophos, the safe lane farming Necrophos go for the max out Sadist early on. Ohio is going to take a bit of damage, actually almost goes down. Another right click from Pilot Eye would have been able to get the kill, but um, Disruptor will barely escape unless Puppy, he was actually going to try and sneak behind the tier 2 tower, but he's blocked out by Black, who saw that one coming a mile away. I but, think it's just the... Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, just the, the Sadist. Talk about it. He actually goes for the level 2 rather than the early Heartstopper. I guess he just thinks that it scales a little bit better. Uh, yeah. And he's actually now going to go for the Death Pulse again. But I kind of like at least getting one level of Heartstopper Aura, but I guess in this tri lane you don't really need it too much when mm -hmm. it comes to Harass, just because of the sheer amount of kills that they're getting. And so I think in that regard, the Sadist will pay off a little bit more. Uh, just being able to lane sustain as much as possible. Like, you can't really use the chicken on the off lane. That's so he probably just has to sustain for as long as he can by himself. Now, what kind of builds do we see on safe and Necrophoses? Because we already have an early Vitality Booster. Is Bloodstone still um, an item, despite the fact that it got some nerfs? No, I think the... I think Bloodstone is okay against... If he was on the other side of things, but I think the Rod of Atos is actually really good, just because yeah. they lack setup a lot of the times, and being able to Rod of Atos early on, uh, especially when you've got Fnatic who don't really have heroes that are going to get early BKBs, like right. that's the core here. Like, look at the Leshrax farm, he's still struggling to get a ring, he's got just like an empty ring of protection, mm -hmm. uh, there's no way that he's going to get a BKB anytime soon, but if you're Eternal Envy and you've got like a sub, 12, 13 minute Rod of Atos, how do you actually counter that? Yeah, now you've got some like super long range initiation that isn't based solely off of um, the Nyx Assassin, who can be a little bit iffy on initiation. Obviously, the Meepo is going to come in as an initiator later on into the game, but you still have to wait for that full Aghanim Scepter Blink Dagger build. Uh, DJ is going to be caught here. They managed to land the Impale very nicely. The uh, Ensnare goes out, and boom, boom, boom. Weeha picks up the first kill for himself. And that was the weak part of uh, Secret's lineup so far is that this. Safely, Nyx was kind of getting bullied a lot by the Darkseer. 
He was doing okay for himself because of the oh, regen. Ohio! He's gonna be able to live through that ultimate, but the follow-up damage will still actually kill him. Now, Black still isn't good enough to right be able away. to face down these two heroes. Ned, he comes in going straight for Pilot Die. Mushi's actually gonna come in, and do they have enough burst damage? They finally take down Pilot Die, and Eternal Envy is left in a nasty spot against three other heroes. If Black can land this stun, they can actually go for the kill, but Black has to play careful still around Eternal Envy, who's got some magic wand charges. They lead with the OD. Astral Imprisonment follow-up stun will be able to land, and Eternal Envy has no more magic to work with, throws out the wand charges, but it doesn't make a difference. Mushi gets a double kill. Great rotation by him. Yeah, that was just a little bit too over-aggressive by Team Secret. Yeah, part of the issue with continuing to run this aggressive tri-lane is that uh, you are eventually going to get punished by it when the mid laner is able to rotate in. At the early levels when Mushi's like level 5 or level 6, of course it's not economical for him to go for these plays, but it's eight minutes into the game. There's no issue with him going up there to secure a double kill, especially on a safe lane carry. Right. Like, if, you're, if your safe laner was somebody uh, equally greedy, then maybe it's not as good of a play, but just because uh, Misery's playing that Nyx Assassin, uh, you can just kind of focus all your efforts on being able to kill the Necro. Misery actually spends a lot of time going for the uh, the bottom lane rune, but he does pick it up, a haste for himself. Um, actually sacks a lot of gold in the experience to the, uh, the tower, and also some tower damage is already down to half HP, but he figures the sustain offered by a full bottle refill, I guess, makes it worth it, and who knows where that haste rune is going to be able to come in handy. He already has the TP score ready to respond to any sort of aggression in the mid or top lane. Do you think they should start rotating Misery out now that he is like, and has a lot of a host of his abilities to bring to the table, or do you think they wait out and have him farm up, say, that early Blink Dagger? I don't think you have to get that aggressive just because your Nyx is getting like an unusual amount of farm. Mm -hmm. He's actually getting pretty leveled and pretty farmed, and in this game it's going to matter a lot just because uh, you notice that he's going for maxing the mana burn first and Weeha. Ned? I mean, he's still not charging out of here and he's done for. Puppy picks up the kill off of the Brain Sap. And Weeha just gets a little bit more assist gold to work with. He already has the point booster, level 9 as well, so he's very rapidly going to start clearing through this jungle. You do have the mech completed now on the Outworld Devourer. The problem though is that usually you could kind of maybe go for a 5-man here, but just because Black is so under-farmed right now, like this is pretty much what you'd expect out of a support Leshrac at this phase of the game. Yeah. Like This is a slightly under-farmed support Leshrac right now if you want to compare it. Like, he's got 12 CS right now, he's died already, 2 assists on him, but those don't really count. Uh, as Eternal Envy just continues to press forward and they're going to go for the charge on Pylite Die, but I don't know how successful this is going to be, just because Mushi's so far At behind. the same time, in the bottom lane, DJ's actually dropping pretty low. Misery had the haste rune earlier. They will be able to get just enough mana on DJ to get a surge, but is he far enough ahead? It looks like Misery can still land the stun. Oh, just short there. And Misery oh, is going to be close back. Charge out on a Pylite Die. They have the tether ready to go. Eternal Levy trying to keep Pi alive, but he's... <laughs> nope, nope, nope. See you later, Die. Eternal Levy. They actually get Astral Imprisonment if that's because oh, the 3 smoke up is here. coming in. Weeha throws out the net, misses one, Puppy's also coming in. They have the Fiends group for it, and there's no response from Fnatic. They will just let Mushi die. Oh, and oh, actually going to nice. get deleted too. That is perfect. They get the Reaper Scythe. Deleting the uh, OD for an extra 30 seconds. Back to bottom lane now. DJ again in a bit of trouble as Misery just needs to be able stun. to land this stun. DJ desperately trying to dodge it, but doesn't happen. Highlight die helps out Misery, and they'll finally be able to pick off that Dark Seer. It's 10 minutes into a game, and that OD's dead for a full minute. <laughs> That's so annoying, and they're also going to oh, steal this wow. massive stack. This was the comeback stack for either the Dark Seer or the Leshrac, completely taken by the cores, and Eternal Envy now has the fully completed Rod of Atos, and this is just going to make fights even harder. Ohio slept up here, and they're just going to go for that quick support kill. He just throws out the kinetic field, but there's nothing else he can do, and it feels like Disruptor is really maybe the big downside here for Fnatic. His lack of early laning phase presence is just costing Team Secret so much. The issue is that Disruptor is one of those heroes that don't do well when they're behind it on. Pylai Dai is going to be the target here at bottom. Is there no TPs in? Alright, we're finally going to have the Meepo TPing in. Pylai Dai has a tether target. In fact, he just turns in fights hoping to be able to bait someone to push forward a bit more. Meanwhile, the rest of Team Secret formatting into the middle lane. That tier one tap is gone. This is a pretty rough sign right now when you commit two heroes that should be able to kill a Wisp and he just kind of repels them back. Like, doesn't even die within that charge combination. Uh, he's got two charges at the urn as well. Is in pretty healthy shape so far. And when it comes to the farm, he's doing just fine. And they don't really have an answer to this Meepo right now because Weeha 
Like, if you're an OD, generally the way you get out is just, you know, you ask to run away, but because he's got like three of them at all times, it's almost impossible to get out. Yeah. Colonel Envy will be running into Mushi here, but he does have the backup. He's actually going to go for the Meteor Rod of Atos. The charge comes in, and Nen is actually going to have to fight him with the Seer, but Weeha comes in. The ultimate goes down. Mushi still managed to live, gets off the ultimate just before he dies, but it doesn't matter. With the help of Pylai die, Eternal Envy easily stays alive. And uh, Team Secret win yet another skirmish. I mean, it's bad enough that they need to shut down some of these heroes like the, uh, the Necrophos and the Meepo, and these heroes are kind of spread out, farming up all over the map, but now they're getting a ton of kills on top of everything else. Ohio, oh, Rod of Ato's gonna be slowed down, the stun misses, but it doesn't really matter, because the Fiend's Grip holds him in place long enough for Necrophos to get another kill. And this Lush Rack again, he just hasn't had any room to recover. He's got 2,800 net worth. He's actually behind the Bane, and yeah, this is a slightly underfarmed uh, four-position player right now, if you want to look at it like that, because uh, his comeback stack got taken away. Lush yeah. Rack is a hero that really relies on still being able to snowball. He's gone for the max edict build, so he can't even get up close and personal and use that ability at all. And the split push just isn't there, because he's against a Nyx, a Meepo, and a Wisp. So the relocate place can happen. He's not tanky enough to be able to survive by himself against the Knicks. Like, there are just so many issues right now with this last track. Is 6.8 time? Are we going to see a return of the pipe? It did get some slight buffs here. DJ is going for it. Uh, seems like with that Hood of Defiance already being built. Is this the way that Fnatic come back into the game? Just overemphasizing team fight potential between the mech and the pipe? I mean, that's what they did in the last game. They've already got the mech completed on the Obsidian Destroyer. Uh, so it's not as prevalent for them to have to go for it. And yeah. you don't really have anything else to go for on uh, DJ. So going for the fast pipe is okay, but you've still got a lot of physical damage to deal with too. Ton of Meepos. He's got the Aghanim Scepter now too, and that's yeah. just another wrinkle in uh, Fnatic's game plan. A are struggling to kill one Necro, but then he's got like four Meepos and the Wisp coming behind as well. And that Wisp is actually getting a good amount of farm. Uh, choice of treads. So just maxing out the stats, I guess, for Pylai Dai. He also gets the urn. Not terribly surprising there. But um, that's, uh, that's a little interesting. I mean, I guess this Wisp is uh, more farmed than we usually see out of Wisp. But a lot of times you see Wisps um, not even go for boots right away or just regular boots for a large period of time. Tranquil is also being heavily favored. Going for the Trinkles, I guess, are okay. But he just wants to make sure that he doesn't get bursted down by anything. Like yeah. if the OD ult hits him and he just crumples. He wants to make sure that he can survive at least for a little bit. Uh, but again, they can just go for this tier 1. They've got enough strength behind them to just continue to barrel down. And I think Fnatic's game plan is just avoid fights for as long as possible. Wait for Secret to overextend and play around the fact that you've got two pretty tanky cores in DJ and Mushi. Like, you've still got a mech, and yeah. you've still got some disable on your team, but... Uh, That's gonna be so hard with Secret now. Rocking two different blink daggers, one on the Nyx Assassin, and the other one being picked up by Eternal Envy's Necrophos. They're gonna make the initiation in the top lane. A great Disruptor Ultimate, they will have the relocate on top of that one. Misery is immediately targeted down, but Mushi is left to the Fiend's Grip once again. More TPs come in from Team Secret, and they're gonna see if they can catch any more heroes with uh, Weeha and the Haste Rune. They actually have the ability to catch someone here, but it looks like Fnatic have split themselves just well enough to keep all four heroes alive. You trade uh, your tier 1 tower bottom and your OD just to kill the Nyx. I don't think that's worth it, but Fnatic getting out of there was pretty good. Yeah. I almost thought that was actually going to be a lot worse, but it looked like Secret for a second were hesitant to continue to chase across the wall. But it was actually Fnatic that was backing up. They're just like, there's no way that we're going to take this fight early on. We just have to get out of here with whatever we can. And one for one trades are probably okay for you at this point. That's about as good as it gets. Rotation around Puppy and Pi. Uh, do they actually have the power? They don't have uh, Fiend's Grip yet. So they can hold him in place for a while with a sleep, maybe. And see if they can center up. The urn is taking him down. If they get another brain sap, DJ is definitely dead. He doesn't have uh, a TP yet for another 20 seconds. And he's just going to be hit by the balls constantly until Pylai Dai gets a dominating streak. That is the worst sign in the world. If you're a Fnatic fan, a Wisp with a spree at all is uh, a bit absurd. 
And he's gonna get the pretty fast Glimmer Cape too. Like, this is a Pylite die that I thought was gonna be pretty underfarmed, especially since Puppy's going for this mech, and it's actually gonna be secret that are just gonna go for the Death Ball. Like, they've almost got a mech completed on their four position base, which is pretty ridiculous right now. Three locates coming out, and Pylite eyes brought Puppy. They're gonna turn things around, go straight for Ohio. Ohio does have to lock down Weehaw. They have to take out this Meepo, but the sleep comes out. Defensive sleep, and Weehaw's gonna be able to stay alive through all of that one. They've deleted the last track. Mushi's gonna be caught in the Fiend's Grip as well, and Fnatic just crumpling at the seams. Oh, now, no 17 to 4 is going to be made an 18 for Team Secret as they're going to try and run down net. Looks like a charge away. And he gets some distance, but he's heading over to Pylai Die. Pylai Die! He's fighting me! I've got an urn! I've got the balls! Let's go, big boy! Unstoppable spree for Pylai Die! That's like the weirdest situation where you run away from a Necro and it's even scarier to run into <laughs> a Wisp right now. Yep. And he's actually just got the fully completed Glimmer Cape now, and uh, Secret realized the advantage that they have is near insurmountable. There's not a huge uh, game-changing spell anymore in the game aside from the Darkseer, but he's pretty underleveled right now. Does have the max vacuum wall, but he doesn't even have follow-up, and everyone's just going to filter in. DJ's going to go down, and there goes your last hope, being able to get some sort of wombo combo off. And with OD not having his ultimate anymore either, that 105 second cooldown is such a killer. Uh, the Wisp gonna just keep everyone healthy and once the Meepo comes back up here I don't really know how they continue to hold yeah I mean the the fact that puppy the Bane has arcane boots as well as a mech this is probably one of the uh, more frustrating signs for Fnatic uh, Eternal Envy does have another 2400 gold so let's talk about Necrophos builds a little bit more once you have that uh, I really love the choice of the blink dagger on Eternal Envy but you probably need to start standing up now um, at what point does Octarine Core become a focus item for you because I'm sure that's got to be one of the big powerhouses for him it's okay uh, he's actually gonna go for um... Looks like, is that a Veil? Yeah, yeah, he goes for the Veil. Uh, a lot of players have actually been experimenting around with the Veil a bit more. I think it makes sense when you see a pipe coming out on the side of Fnatic and so mm -hmm. much of your damage is centered around magic damage. Sure. Uh, so being able to negate the pipe or at least a large effect of it is going to be pretty helpful. Going for the Aghanim Scepter this game isn't as necessary anymore just because you're in such a strong position right now that it's not necessary to delete somebody. Yeah. As you can see, Team Secret really shouldn't have a problem dealing with this next objective. Okay. It's the rest of Fnatic really spread out. I like that they're going for the Roshan instead of just immediately going and squaring up for that tier 2 tower at bottom. Yeah. But Fnatic are just going to use this time to try to split up the map, farm as much as they can. They know, even if they know that the Roshan is up, there's no way in hell that they take that fight. Like, right. You pretty much just give that up, wait for the high ground defense, and just play around Secret maybe getting too over aggressive at this point. Like, a lot of times teams might go for the smoke, uh, but it's actually going to be Secret that are going to go for uh, try to get aggressive and... Yeah, quick pick off Misery is going to finish him off with a blink in, Mana Burn, and Disruptor. Definitely one of the more dangerous heroes when it comes to pushing uphill. The problem's going to be, <laughs> it's probably a first world problem if at best, but Disruptor has a very low death timer this early on to the game, so... They're actually going to go for a relocate at top. Misery is going to try and catch him out, and they'll get DJ. They have the ultimate from the Necrophos. Bye bye DJ, down for 75 seconds now, and they've caught the OT as well with Weeha sneaking in through the back door, will be able to get another one, 22 to 4, 20 minutes in, over a kill a minute for Team Secret, and Eternal Envy's really not slowing down, brought back to that middle lane, tries to catch the Leshrac, but without vision, won't be able to set straight. I mean, this is just a much more coordinated secret this time around. It really yeah. feels like everybody understands the game plan, everybody knows where they're supposed to be. I felt like in the... Uh... The first game that they played, they might have gone a little bit too overconfident with the start that they had, and things started to slip a little bit. Uh, but this game, they're pretty focused. They understand without the Darks here. Again, that's the hero that's been kind of keeping them in the game. The Vacuum Wall is always pretty scary. But with that down, there's not a whole lot that they have to worry about. If oh, nice. Weeha's Double hit. jump. Weeha's going to be able to pop the Disruptor. Unfortunately, he's hit by the ultimate, but doesn't mean much. He's still got so much to stay in the mech. The uh, Necropulses come out. And even Pylite uh, ready to go with the tether at any point. So this is going to be a tier 3 tower dropping Fnatic. I'm not even sure if you try and contest this with only three heroes up. Seems like just a, a game loser. Nah, you pretty much have to give up the Srax and hope for the next fight though. I don't really think Fnatic can afford to just give up two sets of racks without fighting. Right. Uh, the next racks, when you have all five heroes up, you've got most of your abilities up at the same time. Uh, wall's about to refresh. Then you 100% take the fight, and if you lose it at that point, you pretty much just have to call the game. Pilot Eyes like, ah, I like your pipe choice. I'll go ahead and pick one up for myself. Straight Hooded Defiance, already completed pipe. 
And Team Secret gonna force a round two. Misery on the front lines. They get the charge on right on through to Puppy. They're gonna try and pop immediately. Won't be able to get a try. And oh, what a five man back and right into the wall. But is that going to be enough? DJ makes the biggest of plays, but it doesn't seem to matter. Fnatic are still being run straight back to their fountain. Net's gonna be caught by this fiend script. Charges right on through. Hits a turtle heavy. Doesn't have that ultimate anymore, but it looks like they'll still catch Mushi as well as Net surrounding these heroes. And Fnatic, they know it's all over. If you can't get it with a five man vacuum wall like that from DJ, then you're never gonna win a fight. You pretty much just had to try it at least that one time to go for it and again if it doesn't work out this meepo was pretty insane yeah like, he just kind of ran in nobody could really stop him you disrupt one he's like okay well there's four more of me and so fanatic may have to think about start banning away some of those signature heroes like weha's meepo but a rough time for fanatic in game two what an upset